Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. As you can see, this time looking at another 1541. Um, it doesn't read discs. This it, no, there's no errors or anything. You switch it on, the power light comes on, no flashing. But it's just filthy. Look at the state of it. It's absolutely disgusting. So uh, yeah, I'm going to vac this down. I think I might even take the board out and give it a wash and isoprop. Um, clean it all up, and we'll just see what's what. So I've taken it out of the bottom part of the case here, there's just six screws, um, there's three on each side holding into the case, um, and I've done this with the other drives, I've just not shown it. Um, so I've taken it out, vacked out the bottom of the um, case there, I'll probably wash that in the sink actually because it just smells, it just smells disgusting. Um, it's the same with the top piece, I'll show you the state of this, uh, you know it's dirty, look at the grooves and things, have got all sorts of shit in there and it's, it's just really dirty, so that whole lot's going to go in the sink. Um, and have a good scrub with soap and water. Um, in here, there's not much to do, but you can see, you can see you've got some shit, I don't know if it's rat shit or something. It's, I don't know how the hell that's going there um, on the top of that connector. It's just awful. So I need to clean that up. Um, it's a thread, I think, a plastic thread, so you can undo that nut and the whole thing can come off. And I think that's what I'll do, I'll take it off and clean it. Um, but then the drive, I'm going to use some cotton buds with IPA here to clean up all of this, even the metal, because it's just like, even though I've vacked it, it's just covered in a, a, a disgusting coating. Um, you can see some of it under there, it's horrible. Um, and then uh, finally we'll clean up the head. Uh, head there. It doesn't look too bad actually, it looks quite clean, I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, it's definitely not reading discs, so um, it's going to be something to do with the mechanism here, I think, probably dirt. Um, we'll get some lubrication on the, the slide rails and things. Um, feels to be moving okay I think there's perhaps a little bit of resistance there I don't know anyway so we'll lubricate it clean it all up and see what's what well I've just loosely reassembled after cleaning up the logic board and stuff and cleaning up all drive assembly um, and it seems to be working alright loaded first time uh, it's just loaded a micro dot there off a shareware disk so I'll do some more testing now I think I'll get the diagnostics um, cart onto it as well um, just run through things I'll show you if there's anything interesting to point out um, and we'll perhaps have a look at the um, underneath of this because it's an Alps drive. Um, I'll perhaps give you a close look at the mechanism as well because I've not covered an Alps drive so far. Um, but underneath you can see the uh, there's like a rotation a speed timing disc. Um, so I'll show you that in a minute. It makes some interesting noises this drive. That you can hear. It's like little clunks and clinks and things. It's as it are really. Um, but if you look, you know, it's progressing okay. All the tests I'm doing on it, fine. It's just done a mechanical test. Um, that passed and it's, you know, written to this, closed it, opened it, read it, deleted a file. It's getting near the end now. Let's just see if that passes. Yeah, passed. So despite the unusual noises that are coming out of this, it seems all right. Um, anyway, I'll continue doing more tests and I'll report back if there's anything of interest. So as part of tinkering with the Alps drive over there, um, I've got out my other drives as well. Um, I just wanted to just double check something. Um, and that was, I think it was this one, was the one that had the problem with the CPU um, issue. And it's been fine ever since, I've not had a single issue with it at all. Um, but there was just this doubt in the back of my mind about that CPU, because I've just come to test that CPU in a VIC-20 and it works fine, no issues at all. Um, so it's a bit of a mystery, that whole CPU issue uh, from the previous repair I did there on that uh, 1541. So I'm going to, um, I want to show you the rotation thing underneath there, the timing disc or whatever it is on top of the, on the underside of the Alps drive. So I'll do that in a minute, I'll strip that down and I'm going to try that CPU in there just out of interest to see uh, how it behaves in that, that drive. Well it looks like this is a kind of correction to that previous video then really because uh, I don't think you can see, I've got the uh, the one with the yellow dot, that's the one removed from the uh, that last 1541. Um, and I've been testing this for a good half hour now and it works, you don't get any flashing, you don't get any weird behaviour and I have, as I mentioned, tested the CPU in a VIC-20 and it works alright without any issues whatsoever. So uh, yeah, and that other drive, I've just dug it back out as I've just previously seen there and uh, tested it. And I've, I've been using it actually for the last week or two. Um, and it works fine. So maybe it was just a bad connection on the CPU. Maybe taking the CPU out and putting this other one in solved it. But I, I thought, I, I can't remember, I thought that I'd put the other one back in and it started behaving strangely again. So um, I don't know, maybe the socket's just a bit questionable on that other drive. But as it stands at the moment, that other drive is working fine. And this one is working fine with the CPU. I and mean, I've loaded a bunch of stuff. 
in the last 20 minutes here, not an issue at all. It's got quite warm now, and it is a very warm day in here, so if it was temperature related, you know, with regards to the CPU, then you'd expect it to start playing up like it did last time, but I mean, they do get very hot, these 6502s, I have to admit. Um, anyway, I'll show you the, uh, the spindle underneath now, and we can just have a look. I don't know how whether it's, whether it's going to come out on the camera or not, but we'll just give it a try. So you can see the drive on its side there, I've got a disc in. In order to do this, I've just put the 1541 diag um, cart in. Um, I'll put it in uh, diag mode, uh, you know, speed test. I can find it, where is it gone, S, speed check. Press return, right, that's going. Um, so hopefully, yeah, it's gonna keep spinning now. So I just don't know whether that's gonna be captured or not, depending on how this camcorder works. I think the way modern camcorders work, it probably won't reveal anything. Uh, I'll see if I can get a straight on view of that. Yeah, yeah it just looks like all the things are moving to me. Um, you need like a, a 50 hertz, or well, if you're in the US, a 60 hertz light, uh, you know, from a bulb or something in the background to illuminate this. Well, that's the idea, and then you should be able to see some lines moving or not moving. Um, they should be stationary, you know, if, if it's at the ideal speed. If I just switch this off, uh, I think, will the drive stop? It's going to keep spinning, I think. Switch the drive off. Um, you can see the markings there for 60 and 50. Um, yeah, it's just annoying that I can't seem to replicate it here. I've not got, it's not the right room to be doing this in really. I've not got like a background light or something I could illuminate this with. But it will be interesting to see what happens in terms of the capture here. Because I think this is 50, I think sets to do 50 frames per second. It just depends on how it does the capture and I think whether it'll, you know, how it'll come across on the actual uh, playback. Um, but anyway, I just thought you'd find it interesting. I think somewhere here, uh, where the hell is it? There should be a pot. There you go, you can just see it down there. Can you see in the cavity? So that's the pot you would use to adjust the speed. Um, but obviously, I've got the 1541 diagnostics anyway. I could, you know, I could use the speed that's reported by the C64 there rather than just go off that because uh, that's kind of it's more of a, this is more of an analog way of doing it. It's more sort of uh, you know uh, you can get get it out slightly. You know, there's more tolerance there if you do it manually by eye that way. So one of the interesting things with this uh, Alps drive um, compared to the Mitsumi's, um, you'll notice there that the alignment is a bit variable in terms of results. Now bear in mind, I formatted this disc on this drive, so you kind of expect 100% and everything, um, but you'll see it probably dipped towards the end of the disc. It seems you get that little dip there you saw at the start. Now it could be the quality of the disc that I'm using here. I suspect it's probably having a bearing on it actually because a previous disc I used was giving um, worse results. This disc seems to be pretty good. Um, I'll just show you the format actually. Let's just come out of that. If I want to exit, I'll show you. I'll, I'll just format it. The fast format. So you can just see how quick these drives are at formatting. Right, I'll hit F, format, give it a name, test, give it an ID. So as I press enter now, get ready. Look at the head, zooming along there. Four, five, six, six, about seven seconds, seven seconds format a disc, that's remarkable. So anyway, I'll put back the screen, we'll just do that again, just so you can see the uh, alignment test run all the way to the end there, so, uh, what's the alignment check, A, then press space, yeah, you see that first track, 74, um, I'm not sure what that indicates, this is between the track percentage. I think that's like half track alignment, it's checking, and it's only coming up 74 for that first one. But actually, the, I think the whole track's the, fir the, the first column that's coming up 100. So, there's nothing wrong with this drive. I mean, I, I've done the same thing I do with all of these ones I get them, is run through all my different software, all the different diagnostics, play a ton of games on it, try my copy protected games on it, um, and everything's loading fine. So, the drive is perfect, nothing else needs to do, and I'm sure the alignment's okay. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't typically test the alignment this way, as I say. You know, you'd need to for you need the disc formatted on a drive that is known working good, has good alignment, and then use that disc to test this with that way. Uh, but you can see there's another one dipped 81 on the half tracks, whereas previously there wasn't. And in fact, and on the end there, and in fact, if I re repeat that again, you'll see you'll get sort of varying results again, um, just on the half track stuff. So. Just based on that, I would suggest that the Mitsumi Neutronics drives are a better drive because if I do the same test on those drives, it's always 100% um, every single time on both uh, both columns there. Um, so that's interesting. I mean, I don't know how, you, how good this software is, how accurate it is, um, but it's just interesting that there is a difference between you know the results coming back here on this drive versus the two uh, you know Neutronics Mitsumi drives. 
so there's the end result. There's a few marks on this drive, you know, I could spend more time cleaning it up, but I don't want to mark the surface further with, uh, you know, by putting pressure on it and stuff with plastic cleaner and things like that. It's just small flecks of paint and just little marks, but it's actually pretty good, really. And as you can see, I've just loaded Clax, uh, which is copy protected, and that's loaded fine, no issues. Uh, this just took a long time to load this game, seriously. I must have sat there just thinking about things and stuff for probably three or four minutes, maybe five minutes at least with a blue screen thinking there's a crash but you know clearly it hadn't it just takes a long time to load which is um, <coughs> sometimes the case if you're not using a fast loader anyway I thought you'd find those uh, few things there with this drive interesting thanks for watching see you soon